Make sure you subscribe or follow Fresh and Foraged if you like the content we've been creating, and make sure to hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it. And with that, let's get foraging! But before we start, I'd like to mention a free gift that I have for y'all. I've created a detailed three-page guide to my favorite foraging tools and resources. There's something for foragers of all levels. Just sign up for my newsletter at freshandforage.com and I'll get that guide right over to you. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Fresh and Foraged. I'm your host, Carolyn Dugas, and today we're going to learn how to make pillowy spiceberry star anise cookies out of foraged spicebush berries. These cookies are pleasantly spiced with a soft and pillowy texture, which contrasts nicely with the optional chopped pecans. And before you run away because you don't like the flavor of anise, I had several self-proclaimed anise haters taste test my cookies, and they claimed that they had a tolerable amount of star anise. For those of you who aren't familiar with the taste of spice berry yet, I would say it's like a milder version of allspice, with a clear citrusy orange note. It has a very bright and pleasant flavor. Perfect for cold weather baked goods! I find spice berries to be indispensable during cookie season, which conveniently enough peaks around December, since it is very warming, like cinnamon, ginger, and allspice are typical cookie season heroes, but spice bush is actually native to the United States, and it has a much more complex flavor. How cool is that? You can just forage for some tasty cookie ingredients right by your local stream. Now, if you're not familiar with collecting spice bush berries yet, I like to collect my cookie berries in the fall when they're nice and red, but I'm planning to release a spice berry ID mini-sode in January or February this year, so check back to get all the details on this tasty baking seasoning of the woods. And with that, let's head over to the kitchen to do a little holiday baking. Welcome to my kitchen! As per usual, you can find the full recipe for the spice berry star anise cookies over at freshandforaged.com. Let's start off by prepping the spices. Pull some fresh frozen spice berries out of your freezer and pop them into a coffee grinder. This is one of my favorite foraging tools. You can find more about how I like to use it in that foraging guide I mentioned earlier that you get for free by signing up for my newsletter. But for these spice berries, just put them in there, grind them up as finely as you can. It's going to be a wet paste since they are fresh frozen, but as long as there are no large chunks, it should be okay. You'll need 3 quarter teaspoon of gently packed wet spice berry paste. For these cookies. Now while you've got the spice grinder out, why not powder a little star anise? Throw a few pods in, grind them up till they're a fine powder, and then measure out one teaspoon for the cookies. Now that the spices are prepped, let's mix the dry ingredients together. Give a little whisk to one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, three-quarter teaspoon of baking soda, that teaspoon of star anise powder, and mix them all up and set them aside. Now it's time to bust out the old stand mixer. Pop on the paddle attachment and mix together two sticks of room temperature butter, one half cup lightly packed brown sugar, one quarter cup of white sugar, three quarter teaspoon of that wet spice berry paste, and a half teaspoon of fine sea salt. Mix it all together on medium speed for about three minutes or until well combined. Scrape down any batter that's crept up the sides of the bowls and toss in one egg, two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of pure maple syrup, and beat for about two more minutes or until everything is incorporated. Scrape down the sides once again, then add the dry ingredients all at once, and slowly, very slowly, on the slowest speed, mix them all together until there are no longer any visible traces of flour. Now we're trying to avoid the whole mushroom cloud situation, so that's why we're doing this slow and slow. Now once everything's mixed together, Take the beater off and stir in one half to three quarters cup of lightly toasted chopped pecans if you desire. I highly recommend. Now that the batter's ready, it's time to roll these cookies out. Take roughly two teaspoons of batter, roll it in your palms to form a rough sphere, then plop it on a parchment lined cookie sheet, leaving at least two inches between these cookies. Because just like everybody's favorite subway riders, these cookies are spreaders. So just give them a little extra space, you don't want them spreading all over you. Once the cookie sheet is full, bake them in the oven for 11 to 12 minutes or until they are slightly golden around the edges, but still soft on top. Pull them out of the oven and let them firm up for a few minutes before you transfer them to a rack to cool completely. 
The baked cookies will freeze well and will keep for four to five days in an airtight tin container at room temperature. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for tuning into this episode and let me know in the comments if you're a fan of the Spiceberry star anise situation or if you'd rather stick to more traditional cookies. If you don't, there's a pine cookie recipe coming out real soon. Impress your friends and lovers with these cookies made out of actual tree parts. Coming to a social media platform near you this December. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more flavorful foraging content featuring abundant and invasive plants. Also sign up for the newsletter. Happy foraging, y'all.